Hi everyone, it's Sheila here in Boho Daydreams. Welcome to my channel. Um, I was nominated by Michelle Gregory for the 10 Crafty Questions. Um, and Michelle is Joyful Michelle on YouTube. So you should go and check her out. She's really lots and lots of fun. I really love Michelle. I actually know Michelle. I've met Michelle when I was at uh, Gail's Craft Retreat. So, yeah. So I'm here to let you uh, get to know me just a little bit better. Um, and I've been thinking about this for two weeks because this makes me really uncomfortable and very nervous. And you see my hands quite often, and I've adjusted to that. Um, I can pretty well video my hands now, but it's a little different um, sitting here and uh, facing the camera. I see myself. It's kind of distracting, and the mess behind me is distracting too. So um, a lot of you won't know this but I'm an introvert and I'm very shy and you wouldn't really know it because I try hard to um, work outside of that but my nature is very private very very private so um, my name Sheila Joan Unger some of you know me as Sheila Genrich and others may know me as Sheila Coghill but I'm Sheila Unger and I come from a little village um, in BC, Canada, up in uh, central BC, and the name is Vanderhoof. And I lived there almost all of my, my life. And the name Unger, um, I'm not entirely sure what my heritage is, but I do know that um, my, particularly on my mom's side, and she's a Reimer Schellenberg, um, her four parents came from Russia. Um, or they were Dutch. They were either Russian or Dutch. Um, and um, there was a lot of shifting that went on during the times of trouble when they were um, leaving due to persecution. So they would have migrated and some, some went to Mexico, some came to Canada, and some even went on to South America. And my parent, my four parents, they came to Canada. And my grandparents then moved to Mexico. So my mom and all her brothers and sisters, and there's a lot of them being Mennonites, there's a lot. Um, they lived in Mexico. My mom's born and raised in Mexico on a colony um, up until she was like 12 or 13 years old. And then she moved back to um, Canada. They moved to Canada and, and moved to BC. And that's where my mom met my dad. And that's where I was born. So my YouTube name, Boho Daydreams, comes from collecting all of what you see behind me and then some. I was so enamored with um, the Indian textiles that I would buy them when I'd see them because they're so amazingly beautiful. As you know from the packages that I've created, but before I created packages, I collected this stuff and I would sit there and look at it and, you know, if I'd find a piece, I'd bring it home and I would just pour over it. And look at the back because a lot of these pieces are um, hand stitched and um, from my friend in India he says that that's all um, hand created they're special creations they're for something very special because generally they're not um, you can't buy them like that you have to actually have them tailored like that it's very expensive so um, they come from India and the back with the beading is so amazing that you just dream about what you could do with this. And I did not know they were craftable, but I thought, because I have a lot of crazy crafting, uh, crazy quilting books, I thought maybe at some point they would be craftable for that. Maybe the pants were, I didn't know what to do with the beaded pieces, but I knew that the um, pants and the backs and stuff like that, I could probably crazy quilt. Um, and then maybe use some of the beaded pieces, but the crystal pieces, the jeweled pieces, I had no idea what I would ever do with them. Um, so that's where the name comes from. And even still, um, I dream of this stuff. If I, if I have in my, in my mind, like the next package is the blue package. I want to do shades of blue. And so already I'm thinking about that a lot and dreaming about it. And just, it occupies my mind because I, I think about all the things that I can add and how can I make this special? And 
should I be adding some of the laces that I have? Like all these things. So it kind of occupies my mind. And so it's like a daydream constantly until I fall asleep. I do. I am absolutely obsessed in love with these textiles. I mean, I'm wearing, I, I'm wearing one of the dresses, you know, and I have a couple of the saris that I wear. And anything that fits me, um, I kind of keep out for myself. Uh, the ones that I know I'll never, ever, ever fit, like the ones that are like size minus two, not even size zero, the ones that are like this big. Yeah, I cut those out. I do because I know I'm never going to fit into them. But some of them, I, you know, I, I feel special. I can, I can wear them. They're beautiful, you know. And I have a couple of saris that are uh, pre-made saris. So they're already pleated, tucked, and all I have to do is cinch it over. I wear that and I toss the, you know, the scarf over and can't help but feel special when you put that on. I, I wear the jewelry too sometimes and I was going to wear one of the necklaces. Um, they're very heavy and they're very, very beautiful, but it's just too distracting while I'm looking at it um, in the camera. And this is one that my granddaughter has pulled off these things all a couple of times already. This one here was lost outside. I was happy to find it. But when it falls apart, then I will use those pieces for crafting. Um, what's my favorite craft? Well, if you can call making bundles and trim packages a craft, that's my favorite. But it, outside of that is journals. Is journals and envelopes. And anything that has to do with those things. That is beyond me. I haven't yet finished a journal, but that is my favorite. Um, and especially the ones that use a lot of, like, use fabric. I love those. I love them, love them. My favorite shop for crafts, Joann's and Amazon. Um, in Canada, we have a store called Joann's, and it's a it's not a craft store, it's a clothing store. And so I would go into Joann's all the time, and I've been coming back and forth to Montana for, since 2008. And I never went into Joann's until probably 2014 or 2015, because I had no idea about crafts to begin with. I had beads, so I did beads, I played with beads. Oh my goodness, I still played with beads. I mean, I love this stuff, but I didn't know what to do with that stuff. But I loved beads, so I would buy beads. I have beads and beads and beads and beads and silver and beads and oh my goodness. And then I discovered in about 2015, I discovered Michael's in Canada. I discovered them and they had beads too. And so I bought more beads there and wire, but I never looked beyond that because that's, that's all I knew that was craftable. And then I found some crazy quilting books. And I thought, oh, well, maybe, because I don't know how to use this stuff, maybe I would use it in a crazy quilt. Maybe it would work for a crazy quilt, because I had no idea. I didn't even, at that point, I had not even, I didn't even know that YouTube was, um, had crafts on it. I knew it had music on it, and I didn't really listen to it, because I was way too busy working. I'm a lifesaver, and I was always working. I was shift working and worked in multiple hospitals. And I just didn't, I didn't listen to that music. I had my own stuff that I, I was doing. And then my husband told me, with the beads, look at YouTube. There's probably a lot of crafting on there with beads and how to do this and that. And sure enough, there was. And I was like, wow, I've been missing out on this for like a long time. And then there was a recommendation that came up. And I don't know if it was for scrapbooking or something like that. I don't even know. But I was like, wow, look at that pretty paper. I love paper. But that's really pretty paper. So then by chance, I saw a junk journal after I saw the scrapbook album. Then I saw a junk journal, and that just took me. That took me. And then um, from there on, I had... Um, had to go shopping at Joann's. And I would spend all of my money, all of my vacation money at Joann's and then some. Um, because those sales, I could not believe it. There was 50% off sales plus 50% off coupon. I couldn't believe there wasn't a lineup out the door. Seriously. And my husband would say, Hun Bun, this is Montana. There's a sale on every week. And it took about three years before I believed him. 
eight million paper packs later, tote of stamps, um, all the pigments that you can imagine, because they were on sale, I had to have them. All the different cutters, um, uh, the embossing folders, this, that, and the other thing. I didn't know how to use them. I knew that maybe one day I would use them if I ever had space, but I needed to have it. And then as I discovered all these crafters on um, YouTube, and they'd be like, oh yeah, I use this embossing folder. You've got to buy it. Couldn't find it at Joanne's. Came from Amazon. Amazon was my go-to place. If I was in Canada, I would buy from Amazon and just have it shipped to um, Montana. And sometimes I would get here like three months later and I'd have like 25, 30 packages waiting for me. All the shimmer flakes, the gold flakes, the glues. Oh, someone uses that glue. Well, you got to have it. The cinch machine, the, um, the, that sticker maker had that for two years before I ever even opened it up to make washi tape last year. So, but if it, if someone used it, I had to have it. So Amazon and, and Joann's two favorite places in Canada, thrift shops, uh, the little mission shift thrift shops, the Salvation Army thrift shop. Um, some, some of our provinces have goodwill. So even there, you know, just wherever, if it said thrift shop, I would go in because it was the strangest thrift shops out of nowhere that I would find that I first found these things. And so, I mean, and I still go to them and those are like the ones that are out of the way that rarely ever get visited. Um, I always find this kind of stuff there. It's lots of fun. Love it. Even my, even my two girls now, my daughter and my daughter-in-law, when they're traveling, if they see thrift shops, yeah, they, they stop in too. They always have check. You just have check for mom. You just never know. So nice. Uh, my five top um, YouTube. So as I was growing and whatnot, I mean, I liked all the big ones that everyone else is like too, that we have, we all follow. But as I was developing my own taste, um, Mrs. Cog was always my favorite. I've, that's where I learned about Starry Silk, the ribbon. I got lots of that before I ever realized that it was this stuff. I didn't know it, but now I do. Um, but yeah, I, I love Mrs. Cog. I've continued to follow Mrs. Cog just because I love how she creates. I love the colorfulness of Mrs. Cog and the innkeeper too. I love the innkeeper because she's very colorful also. Um, but the, the YouTuber that just mesmerizes me, um, and she's probably not a well-known YouTuber, is Joyce Kurtz. And I'm going to link her below. Um, I have three of her journals. Um, she creates them and I've been lucky enough to be able to get in there and purchase them. But her work is amazing. Um, she does, she only does little video clips of her, um, of her journal to music. Otherwise I would tag her in this cause I would love to know her a little bit better, but I love her journals. If I could be on a list, for her journals. I've asked many times and she just doesn't have lists. But look at this. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, I would be on a list for Joyce's. Every piece that Joyce ever creates. I fell in love with her envelopes first and um, I followed her ever since. She's just absolutely, I adore her. I also adore Randy Kirby. I love Randy Kirby. She is the admin in um, Boho Daydreams, and honestly, she just, oh, the girl creates stunning, stunning work. Look at that. Those are all little bits and pieces of saris that she has received in bundles, and she just takes little squares of them and sews them together and maybe adds a little bit of a bead or a flower, and she makes this um, square dance. She calls this a square dance tapestry, bo Boho Square Dance Tapestry, and it's beautiful. Um, and she is speckled seahorse and I'm going to link her below too. Um, I also love, um, Annalise Erickson. I love her because she does such amazing, amazing work too. Um, let me see. Here is a journal. I did a swap with her. 
I have a lot of journals. Um, well, not as many as some people, but I have a lot of journals because I've swapped with people. I have um, bought journals, um, whatever. I just absolutely love Annalise and her envelopes too. They're just amazing. And I think her YouTube channel is called Annalise Journaling. I'm not sure, but I'll link her also um, down, down below. And another person that I follow, um, I love, um, I love Sessa Spar. I love her creativity. I don't know if she has a YouTube channel yet or not, but I do absolutely love how she creates. She's very, she's very inventive. And I also very much love Vicki West. Vicki West doesn't have a YouTube channel, and I wish she did. Um, she created this journal for me. We did a swap. And it's just stunning. It's very personalized, and I love her work so much. I have several things from Vicki, and they always make me so happy. I also have these from Mrs. Cog. Um, they're so beautiful. I love, love, love these. She gifted those to me after a friend had um, ordered a textile package to her as a gift. And it was was so, so amazing that she um, sent me um, the gift because um, I wasn't expecting it. I also love Gail Agostinelli and I love Paula Forder. And I also love, um, oh, there's so many channels. I mean, I love, I love Nick the Booksmith. I love, um, uh, I love Amity Bloom. I love all of those people too. But the ones that I gravitate to um, are a little bit colorful. And they're a little, um, I don't know. I, I just have my favorites that I always watch. I can't watch anything in here or I'd be watching everybody. There'd be a lot more. I probably know a lot more channels if um, I had a Wi-Fi in here, but I don't. But hopefully, hopefully soon then I can get caught up. That'd be fun. Um, my favorite colors are pink. Always loved pink. Creamy pink, uh, dusty rose pink, 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 baby pink, uh, Victorian pink, 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 pink. Love pink. I do. I love aqua, but pink was always my first favorite color. Pink, cream, and aqua. Love, love, love those colors. Love them. What's my favorite craft tool is my sewing machine. Um, a sewing machine on paper, on fabrics, um, it, just, it just makes your craft project, just takes it to a whole different dimension and texture. And there's so much you can do with a sewing machine. Um, if I had one tool, it would be, this, it would be a sewing machine. Sewing machine and scissors and lots of glue. Um, where does my love for crafting come from? I don't know. Uh, my mom didn't craft. My grandma sewed, but she just sewed dress, her own dresses and aprons. And there wasn't really a lot of craftiness in, in our household growing up. But I did go with my grandmother when I was seven and eight years old with senior bus. Senior citizens would go to the city. My grandma spoke low German. She didn't speak English at all um, and she couldn't understand it well enough to communicate well because it would be spoken too quickly it didn't make sense to her so she would take me along and we would go to fabric shops because that was her thing she loved fabric so I would spend hours with the fabrics and hours with in the wedding shops because she was looking for different types of laces and stuff and threads it was kind of boring for a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old, but I still loved it because as I grew up, I um, just always gravitated towards fabric. Fabric and lace. I just, even if I don't know what to do with it, I'm still going to buy it. Um, when did I start crafting? Probably when I got Barbie dolls. I would just wrap my Barbie dolls up in just pieces of fabric that I would find. And then when I got to be older, I did some chalk drawings. I did some chalk artistry, but I liked working with textiles better. So I did quilting. 
Um, I did cross stitching. I made lots of dolls and stuffed animals, things like that. Things with a pattern. Um, I'm sci My brain is science driven, so everything is a formula. And if I have a pattern, I'm your girl. Thinking outside the pattern for me is very hard. And that's why when I, when I see somebody just quickly put together a piece with fabric, lace, and glue, and ink, I'm like, whoa, how would you do that? Because for me, I would have to, like, think about it a lot. It would have to make sense to me be from the get-go. It has to make sense to me. So anyway, I admire that in other people, that they can do that. And I would like to be able to do that. Um, I need to have a little bit more time to do that. And I'm starting to be more organized to where I actually have, I can get these packages made faster. It used to take a long time. Now it doesn't take quite as long. Um, and I'm more organized now. Things are kind of color coordinated. Uh, but I have room to grow. I still have to, the stash back there, all of that stuff sitting back there behind the, the, um, the clothes hanger there, the, yeah, that's all my personal stuff. I save pieces for myself, so I um, need to organize that and get that cleaned up, and then I'll be happier in here. I'm very happy in here. It's my favorite place to be. But then I'll feel like I have, I can craft them. You know, I've got to kind of get things a little bit cleaned up. And my favorite place is in my Celia. My husband um, converted a... Uh, an 8x40 shipping container last year for me. It's got like windows and patio doors. I overlooked the mountains. They were full of snow and the snow's all melted and they're back to being green and a little bit colorful. Um, I live in the mountains now and I just love it. Anyway, this is um, it for me. Um, I want to nominate um, uh, Randy Kirby. I would also like to nominate... Um, Annalise Erickson, and I would also like to nominate Carol Seidel to um, complete this challenge also, and I'm going to get a hold of you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for spending this 20 minutes with me. Bye.